this is MJ and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to crochet the Hello Pumpkin cardigan. I'll be using comfy worsted weight yarn for this pattern in two colors. So I have copper and ivory. Comfy worsted is a 75% Pima cotton and 25% acrylic yarn. It's nice and soft. It's machine washable in cold water and tumble dry to low, but I would suggest just laying it flat to dry. And we'll need two hook sizes for this pattern. So I'm going to be using a five millimeter H crochet hook as well as a 4.5 millimeter G plus. And these are my hooks from Furls Crochet. I've got a cookie hook here as well as the cafe hook. Okay, so we're going to start out with me showing you how to make the mosaic pattern. I'm going to work through a small swatch with you. So this is actually one of the pockets and it's the perfect size to work through a swatch. So if you want to grab your hooks and yarn, we're going to start off with that. And that will also give you a good idea for doing your swatch for your gauge, etc. So it's a good piece to start out with before you jump into the cardigan. Okay, to start off, let's take a look at the chart and I'm going to explain how this chart has worked. So the inset mosaic crochet is a no tails technique. So this is all included in your PDF. So if you click through the link in the description box, you'll be able to get a copy of the PDF so you can follow along with me with this pattern. So here is our chart. So we have two colors, A and B, and you can read them all up the side here. Okay, so this is the color we're working through. Now for every row you see, we start here one and then we have one A, two, two A. So we're crocheting two rows for every color. So we'll work from right to left across and then one A will work from left to right back across. And this allows us to carry all of our yarn tails up the right side so we end up with no tails as you can see on each side of our work. So now our first row is fairly simple. We are just working single crochets across, single crochets back. So now what happens on row two is you're going to start coming to these white boxes. So a white a box without anything is either a single crochet or a chain one and skip one stitch per box. So because we're working in um, color B, for every B color box we see we'll work a single crochet. When you come to the contrasting color, you'll chain one and skip that stitch. So then we would work three single crochet chain one, skip a stitch, and just repeat the pattern across. Then when we come back across to A, we're doing the same thing. We're working a single crochet in two, chain one, skip a stitch, work single crochets in three, chain one, skip a stitch, and working all the way. We're dropping off and picking up these colors as we go. We're just hiding the tails in the first stitch, which is really the first and last stitch. It's really easy. I'll show you once I get into the demonstration. So now what changes up a bit for row three is we're gonna see these X's. When you are working from right across to the left, which is the right side of our work, we will do drop down double crochets when we see and we'll be coming down three rows below. So here if we're looking at row three we'll work a single crochet because we're working now in this color color A so single single drop down double single and then when we get to the contrasting color it will be a chain one skip a stitch single drop down single chain one skip a stitch etc. Now what happens when we come back across row 3A? This is where we're going to ignore the X's because when we're working on the wrong side of our work, we won't do any drop downs. We'll be just working single crochets into those stitches. So single, 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 chain one, skip a stitch. Single in the next three, chain one, skip a stitch. It's really quite simple once I show you 
working through it, you'll see how simple it actually is. So if you are, were looking at, let's say, one of my overlay mosaic crochet patterns, you could really simply convert it to an inset chart just by working that row back across and just changing up this chain one skip stitch. So you can use any of my charts and convert it, which is really cool. So if you decide you want a no tail method on one of the other patterns, go ahead and use this technique. So now what I've also done to help you a little bit is I've shaded our repeats. So this is our repeat row for our pattern. So row three through 14 will be repeated throughout the pattern. Now I've also highlighted our columns down here. Column five through eight is our stitch repeat across. So when we work the pattern, if you look at the written pattern, the first four stitches I will write out for you. And then this stitch pattern here is what's repeated across. Okay, and then we end always with our um, column 21. So the stitch pattern is a multiple of four plus two for this pattern. And that's how, so you know this section you'll be repeating if you're reading through the chart only and not the written pattern. But I will write this out for you as well. So this little chart here we see is the actual pocket size. So if you look at the chart compared to the pocket, the pocket's going to look a little bit longer and that is because every box here is two rows. So this is what we're going to work through together. And then you'll be able to follow along with the cardigan pattern based on this stitch pattern. The difference is, is the, the pocket, we're only going to be chaining out a total of 22 to work across 21, whereas the cardigan, you'll be chaining a lot more to start off that back panel. This pattern is worked all flat um, in one piece from the bottom up. So we're starting at the back, working the whole cardigan as one piece. Now, because the cardigan starts out with the band, I'm going to work through that quickly with you, just so you see how this cardigan gets started. So with the smaller hook, I'm going to make a slip knot, put that on the hook, and I'm going to chain out 11. And then we'll work a single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each chain across. So you should have 10 stitches. We'll chain one in turn. And then we'll be working the band in the back loops only. So single crochet in the back loops. chain one in turn, and then we're just working single crochets in the back loop to get the length of the band. So this is also how you're going to make the belt for the cardigan as well. So you're just going to continue working in rows, follow along with your pattern. For the medium size that I'm working on in this tutorial, you're going to want to crochet up a total of 81. So to count your rows, I like to kind of let it squish and count the ridges. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, etc. So now when you have your band completed, you're going to work single crochets back along your band. And this is actually going to be row one of the chart. Okay, so you'll work across 
81 stitches and then you'll work back across in 81 stitches again. So what I'm gonna do now is show you the chart stitch pattern and I'm gonna show it on the pocket, but this is how the back will begin. You'll just then start working the stitch pattern, what I'm gonna show you. And this pattern, you will need to follow along with the PDF to make sure you're on the right track for the size you're working on. Okay, so the, ch the chart shows us that we'll chain a multiple of four plus two, which for this pocket here, we will be chaining out a total of 22. Now, what you need to be aware, the pattern will tell you how many rows for your band you need to work across because what will happen, we don't need that extra chain with the, um, because we're not working back into a chain where all we need to do is basically for the cardigan, a multiple of four plus one for the number of rows we need. But when we're working the pocket, we do need to chain out that extra two for the stitch pattern so that we have 21 stitches in total. So I'll be chaining out exactly what the chart is showing. And this is a really good way as well to make your swatch. Now we are gonna be using the larger hook for this. So the five millimeter. So go ahead and chain up 22. So then what you'll do is work in the second chain from the hook, a single crochet and work single crochets across. So this is row one of the pattern and A will be the ivory. You can reverse the colors, gives you a little bit different look, but you can totally reverse them if you prefer. Okay, so I've worked across, I should have 21 stitches, just like our chart states. And then we'll be working 1A next and working all the way back across, still in single crochet stitches. So I will just chain one and turn and work single crochets across. So whenever we're working an A row, it is the wrong side of our work. And when we're working rows on the right column, the right side is the right side. And so if you want this pocket bigger, that's easy to do. You're just gonna work that multiple of four plus two when you start out with that chain and you can easily make this pocket as big as you want. So now what we're going to do is pull in color B. So on our last stitch, we'll change the color. So go through the stitch, pull up a loop, and we're going to yarn over with color B. Pull that through. We'll chain one. We'll turn, and what I like to do always on that very first stitch, it's always gonna be a single crochet. So we will crochet over the tails. So now this tail is just my starting tail, but always the tail that we're carrying, I like to crochet over it in that stitch because it just hides it. So now what we'll do is look at, again the chart, sorry for the glare from my light. We're going to work two and then we'll do a chain one skip a stitch. I'll work three and then I'll do a chain one skip a stitch. So I'm working two single crochets. So one, two, then I'm going to chain one. I'm going to skip a stitch. Make sure that you don't do your chains too tight. And then I'll work one, two, three, chain one, skip a stitch, 
One, two, three, chain one, skip a stitch and single crochet. And we're repeating that pattern all the way across. Okay, so you can follow along with the written chart that's in the pattern or the chart. And now we'll single crochet in the last stitch. We'll chain one in turn. We're gonna work back across the row. Now you can follow along with your chart or you can just easily see where you need to crochet. So we have two and then when we come to the chain one, skip a stitch, we do the same thing. Chain one, skip the stitch and then we should have three singles, one, two, three, and then I'm coming to another chain one, skip a stitch. So it's pretty easy just to follow along with your row. Um, and I find it does save a little time, but if you're unsure, just reference the chart or reference the written pattern for how you're working this across. This is a pretty repetitive, it's a simple, a small pattern, very repetitive, so it is easy to remember so you are able to work it up pretty quickly. Okay, so now we're ending. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna get that orange one out of the way, but I like to single crochet over this tail as well when I'm coming back. Just need it going to drape it over my hook go through the stitch, pull up a loop, tug the tails, we're dropping off B, we're gonna yarn over with the cream, chain one and turn, and then turn again. I like to kind of get this all out of the way and I single crochet over my B tail as I'm carrying it up the side. So just doing that, you're not gonna see any of those tails at all. There's not gonna be any pulls or anything. It's all gonna be hidden in the stitch. So now let's take a look at row three, because row three is where we start doing some of the drop downs. So we're starting out with a single in the first two. Now, Whenever you do a drop down, you should be coming to those um, chain one spaces. And then there should be that stitch to work into. Drop down and do a double crochet. Then we have a single crochet. And then we're gonna do a chain one, skip a stitch. So we're gonna skip this stitch, we'll work a single crochet, and then we should be coming to the next space that we can do our drop down. Single crochet, and we're coming to the contrasting color, so we're gonna do a chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet and this is going to be again repetitive all the way along so you're going to be able to figure out the pattern fairly quickly chain one skip the next stitch single drop down single and we're just repeating that pattern across Okay, so I'm ending here. That last section, I have a single drop down, two singles, we'll chain one and turn. And now, again, remember, whenever we see the X now, when we're coming back along row 3A, they're worked as a single crochet. The only thing we're continuing to do is that chain one, skip a stitch when we see the contrasting color. So one, two, three, four, and then chain one, skip a stitch, one, 
two, three, chain one, skip a stitch. And we're repeating that across. And as I'm coming to the end, I'm going to drape that over my hook. I'm going to go through the stitch, pull up a loop, tug the tails, we're yarning over with B, chain one and turn, and single crocheting over the tail. I like to get my single crochet started because it's always a single crochet into that first stitch. Okay, so now for row four, I just like to look at it briefly to see what I'm going to do here. We're, we're doing um, every other stitch this time. So we're going to do a single crochet, chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet, chain one, skip a stitch, and then a drop down. So let me just move that out of the way. So we've done the single, chain one, skip a stitch, we're working a single chain one, skip a stitch. Then we should be coming to this stitch that's available. We're dropping down three rows below and it's always the like color that you're crocheting into. Okay, so when we skip that stitch and we do that drop down, you know you're going into the, the same color as that you're working with and there should be that space available to make that stitch. So chain one. So this time we're crocheting over this one, the single, chain one, and then there should be that stitch available for that drop down. And we're repeating the pattern across. And we're ending with a single crochet. Chain one and turn. Now we're just following the pattern. Single, chain one, skip a stitch, single, chain one, skip a stitch, single. Okay, so we're working into those stitches that we made on the other row, following those chain one, skip a stitch pattern. And work that across. And at this point, you should be getting the hang of this. So we're again, we're gonna crochet over that tail We pull up a loop, give the tail a tug. We yarn back over with A, pull this to tighten it, chain one and turn, and then single crochet over that tail again. And see, you can see we've got, it's nice and clean this edge, nice and clean this edge. When you're counting rows, it's really easy just to flip your work to the wrong side, two, four, six, eight, or one, two, three, four. Okay, so now we're on to row five. Okay, so row five, we'll have a single, drop down, single, drop down, chain one, skip a stitch, drop down, single, drop down. Do a single. And drop down. Then we'll chain one, skip stitch, and a drop down. Single. Drop down. Okay, so we'll continue in the pattern across. Okay, we're gonna end with a single crochet. Chain one, and again, when we go back across, we won't be doing drop downs, we're just doing single crochets and chain ones. So this is basically how your chart is worked. You can see we've got no tails, it's a nice clean technique, and you're gonna continue with your chart working all the way up to row 14 before you start repeating it again. So throughout the entire cardigan, you will be following the chart and how it's gonna work is you'll work your, your back panel 
And then we will chain out our left and our right side for our sleeves. And then we'll just continue working in the pattern until the sleeve width is reached. And then we mark off for our front, our fronts, and then we just work our front panels and finish with a join as you go band. So it's all worked in one piece. So you'll just need to follow along with your pattern for the size you're working on. Okay, so I've worked through up to row 13 and I'm gonna go through 14 with you because what we'll be doing is finishing off. And because I'm finishing off the pocket, I don't want to do the chain one spaces. So let's take a look at row 14. So I've started out already with my single crochet. We'll do the drop down. And now instead of working the chain one, skip a stitch, we're just gonna work a single crochet and then we'll work the drop down. Single crochet. drop down and again I won't do the chain one skip one we'll just do a single crochet okay because we're finishing it off we don't need to do those chain one spaces because we won't be continuing with the pattern now for the rest of the cardigan you'll just work it as normal but for the pocket or whenever we're finishing off the pattern I don't want you working those chain one skip one we'll just do a single crochet into those spaces. So I'm gonna continue across and then I'll meet you up again. Okay, we'll chain one and turn and now we'll just work single crochets across. We don't have any chain one spaces, so it's just a single crochet into every stitch across. And then we'll change over to our color A and we're going to work a little band. I'm gonna put, you don't have to, but I think I'm gonna put a little um, ribbed band on the pocket just so it kind of ties in with the rest of the cardigan. Okay, so I'm finishing this off. So the last stitch, we're gonna weave that tail through. Chain one, and now I'm going to change over to the smaller hook for this. We'll work a single crochet in every stitch across. Also, you can cut our pumpkin. We're finished with the color B, so we'll just work across now in single crochets okay so we've worked across and now I am going to just do a small ribbed top so I'm going to chain out five one two three four five I'm gonna work back in the second chain from the hook, a single crochet. So we should have four, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna skip that first stitch. We'll slip stitch into the next two. Turn, keep the work to the back and we will single crochet in the back loops across. Chain one and turn. Single crochet in the back loops across. Okay, and then we will slip stitch in the next two stitches. Turn, and we're just going back and forth all the way across the pocket, the edge of the, the ribbing. Chain one and turn. Okay, so we'll just keep going down, slip stitching in two, and we're gonna work that all the way across. 
Okay, so we're gonna finish up here at the top. We're not gonna work back down. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. 20 rows in total will work across. So this is what the back panel is looking like. So how this will work is that we'll do those first two rows, one and one A will work the single crochet one stitch per row of our band and then back and then row two, row three, we're just gonna get right into the pattern. So follow along with the size you're making. And then we just keep working the repeat pattern until we get our desired back length before we start into the sleeves. Okay, so I've been working away on my back and I've completed my four repeats of our pattern. Okay, so with a new ball of yarn, we're gonna come over to the left-hand side and we're gonna join on and chain out for our left sleeve. Our pattern is worked in a multiple of four, so we need to chain a multiple of four. So if you're altering the length of your sleeve, you just wanna remember that it needs to be a multiple of four. So I'm chaining out 64. And I'll just complete that off camera and then I'll meet you back up again. Once you have your 64 chains, you can just fasten that off, pull that through, and now the left sleeve is set up for when we work across the row. Just going to finish the stitch has just come undone. And what I did there is I fastened off the orange yarn because it will now be worked at the end of the right sleeve. So I fastened that off. And now for the right sleeve, what we want to do is we need to make an extra chain for the turning chain. So again, it's a multiple of four, 64. Plus we'll need an additional chain because we're gonna turn back and work. So that's why this side will chain 65 instead of 64. Okay, so I'll just continue working my 65 chains off camera. Okay, so once you've chained out your 65, we're just gonna go back across single crochets into every chain. So it's second chain from the hook and we'll work across single crochets. So you're gonna have a total of 64 stitches. So I will finish this working across off camera. Okay, so I've worked across my sleeve in my 64 stitches. Now we're getting into the pattern. Once you reach the body, each size will be different. So I want you to work in the established stitch pattern across the body until you get to the other sleeve. So if we're working the medium size, you should be on the repeat row of 11 and continuing across. Single, and then I just want you to work single crochets all the way across the chain. And on our way back, we're gonna start um, into that chain, chaining one, skipping a stitch pattern on the reverse side. But for this first row of the sleeve, I want it to be a little bit more of a sturdy base. Okay, so I'm gonna work that across and then I'll meet you up again. Okay, so I've worked all the way across, 64 stitches, we'll chain one in turn. And now we will go back across in our pattern. And four, and we're gonna change over, okay, to our orange. So we're now joining the orange back on, our color B. Okay, 
back. So we'll get turned into position. I'm gonna crochet over those tails on the first stitch. Okay, so we're just gonna work across the pattern now. It's a, it'll be a little tricky just finding the right places on the sleeves, but basically once you get over to the body, it'll be easy to see where you're working. Just continuing with our pattern. So this is the trickiest part, just getting that pattern established on the sleeve now. But now what we're doing is you can just continue this pattern, working it right across the other sleeve as well. And we're just gonna keep working until we have half of our sleeve complete, okay? So that'll complete the, the whole back portion, the sleeve, the body all together. So I will pop up directions on how many rows you need to do. Um, every size will be probably slightly different um, for because this will be half the width of the sleeve. So if you had a 14 inch sleeve, half of that would be seven inches. If you had a 15 inch, seven and a half and so on. So just follow along with the pattern and I'll pop up for this size how many rows you'll need to complete for that half sleeve portion. And then once that's complete, we'll meet back up again for the next step. So again, we're just going through a repeat pattern of rows three through 14 as we continue with the sleeve. So for our medium size cardigan, we're working a total of 36 rows for half of the sleeve or 18 of each color. Now every size will be ending on row 64A. And if you want to go to the PDF, I have charts that show the entire stitch pattern, every single row showing how each size is worked, where the back stops, where the sleeves start, etc. And it will just help you follow that stitch pattern all the way through and keep you on track. So even though every size has a different sleeve width, also every size has a different back length, but the back plus half the sleeve all equal the same. So every cardigan is the exact same length. It's just altered up a little bit differently so that we can get that stitch pattern to line up. When I was first crocheting the cardigan, I ended up not getting my, my stitch pattern to perfectly line up. So I've adjusted the pattern so that every size is going to line up perfectly. So once you have completed up to half of your sleeve for whatever size you're crocheting, you're then gonna mark your neck opening. So follow along with your pattern for how many stitches you wanna count over to mark that neck. So I've marked this neck opening, it measures about six inches, and I counted over 93 stitches. I marked the 93rd stitch, and I did the same thing on this side. I marked the 93rd stitch. Okay, so let's just count the stitches we have unworked. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Okay, so 23 stitches is the neck opening and then we have 93 stitches on each side. Now, depending on the size you're working on, that can vary how many stitches you'll be counting across. But for our medium size, this is how many stitches you'll work across. So if you follow along with your pattern, I'll have that outlined for each of your sizes. And once you've marked the neck opening, you're just gonna continue working back across to your marked stitch and then back across and working in that established stitch pattern. So follow along with the chart and the written pattern and just keep following. Now what you'll be doing is crocheting the next half of your sleeve. So you'll be doing another 36 rows and then we're gonna mark off the body. So go ahead now and crochet up those 36 rows and then I'll meet you up. So now what we can do is we need to join over here. So we're gonna take another ball of yarn and we need to join over here and 
continue doing the same thing, okay? So our mark stitch here, I'm gonna join into it. And then I'm gonna work that drop down double. So like this side, we need to keep working until we've done a total of 36 rows. So 18 rows plus the reverse row works out to 36. So I'm gonna complete both those sleeve sections off camera because it's gonna be a little bit of work, but again, the pattern is just repetitive. We're just working through the established pattern once I have the second half of the sleeve portion completed, we're then going to mark the body off and we're going to complete the front panels and the front ribbing on the panels. So that will be the next step. So I have a little bit of work ahead of me getting me this section crocheted. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll meet you back up again. Okay, so once you have your sleeve completed, we're going to mark off for the front panel. It seems pretty narrow, but remember we are going to be attaching on the nice band that's going to help kind of make up some of that width. So I counted over my 64 stitches and for the size I have 29 stitches remaining. So this is going to be the same for both sleeves, except we have fastened off on our right side. And over here on the left side, you end up on this side so you can just continue working. So I've already started working the panel on this side, but I did the exact same thing. I counted over, I marked off my sleeve. And because I was on the inside, I didn't have to fasten off for the left. I was just able to continue working in the pattern. So just remember, it doesn't matter what size you're working on, but we will be ending on different rows because of the size difference, but you're still just working in the pattern. So basically the whole design is just working the repeats of three through 14. You may end on different rows, start on different rows, but you're just gonna follow the chart to make sure that you're following your pattern correctly. So what we'll do now is we will be joining back on so I fastened off both colors and then we need to join back on. And so we'll join in single. And we're just gonna continue now just working as we have been in our pattern. You'll need, nope. you'll need to be doing the same number of rows that we worked for the back through the front as well. So you're just gonna continuing in the pattern to get as many rows as needed so it equals up the back. And then I'll show you over here because I've already completed this side. So now when we work this last row, we are not going to do the chain spaces. We're just going to work single crochets. So you're working your two single, your drop down, single, 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 drop down. Make sure you finish like that. And I'm just going to change over to the smaller hook. Okay, so here's a 4.5 millimeter. So I'm dropping down So I'll chain one and turn. I'm gonna work across single crochets. So both front panels are worked the same. So even though I haven't worked up this one, you're gonna work it the same, the same way, same repeat, and do the ribbing the same way. 
So I'll complete that across and then show you how to do the join as you go ribbing. So we're gonna chain 11. And in the second chain from the hook, we're gonna work a single crochet. So work single crochets down the chain so you have a total of 10 stitches. Then what we'll do is skip that first stitch and slip stitch into the next two. We're gonna turn, putting our yarn to the back, we'll work in the back loops only. Single crochet in the back loop. Chain one and turn, work single crochets in the back loop, down the row. Okay, and then we'll slip stitch into the next two stitches across the base here turn and then keep repeating that back and forth across the panel. Okay, so I've worked across the row and I'm actually ending with 28 rows rather than 29. So I'm gonna fasten off Okay, so both of our front panels are worked the same. Okay, so now I'm gonna work on the cuff. So what you're gonna do is take the side of your sleeve here, and both cuffs again are worked the same, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna slip stitch an edge across. It's just gonna give us a really nice clean finish to the end of the mosaic pattern. And we're gonna do a slip stitch per color. So one here, one in our cream, one in our orange, etc. So basically one slip stitch per two rows. So we'll join in. And I'll chain one. You want to make sure you do these hang on I'm gonna change over to my larger hook for this you want to make sure you do these nice and loose because we're going across two rows so one two just make sure you don't tug it tug it at all let's keep them nice and loose Okay, just like that. Okay, so this is how it's looking. So for this size, I've worked across a total of 36 stitches. Now I'll switch over to the smaller hook. It'll make this part a little easier. We'll chain one and turn. And now in the first loop you see here, okay? That front loop will work a single crochet. So we'll work single crochets in the front loop of the slip stitch all the way across. Okay, so you're just grabbing the one loop. Okay, and then we'll chain one and turn. 
Okay, so now it's looking like this and we need to do some more decreases. Now, if you wanted a fairly loose cuff, you could decide to not do decreases, but I'd like the cuff to be snug. So I'm gonna continue to make this even smaller. So I'm gonna work a single crochet in the first two, and then I'm gonna do a single crochet decrease across the next two. So go through, pull up a loop, go through the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through. single crochet in the next two, and then a decrease. And we're gonna do that all the way across. Okay, so I've reduced it to 27 stitches. I'll chain 11. Okay, we're gonna do that join as you go band. Just like we did the front panels, we're gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna work the second chain from the hook, single crochets, and I'll work this across. So I'll skip that first stitch, we'll slip stitch into the next two stitches, turn, and work single crochets in the back loop across. Chain one and turn, and then we'll work in the back loop of every stitch across. Okay, and we'll slip stitch to the next two, turn and keep working rows back and forth in this manner across. Okay, so I'm just gonna complete that, work this up for both sleeves. Okay, so once you have completed your front panels, what we'll do is edge your panel and then add a join as you go ribbed band. So all I did for this is I joined on with the smaller hook and I just worked single crochets across. So one per stitch and then one single crochet per every row. So Remember when you look at this, you have two rows for your orange color and two rows for the cream color. So I just worked that all the way around, worked across the top of the neck opening and down. And then I did the join as you go ribbing, just like I showed you how to do it on, this, on the, um, the front panel and the sleeve cuffs. So I'm not gonna go through that with you again. It's just a join as you go band. So instead of doing the 10 stitches, I did 14. So we had a little bit wider collar going around. Okay, so that's how that's looking at this point. Now, once you get your collar done, before we start seaming or anything, you'll want to block your cardigan to measurements. So you're gonna to wanna to check the schematic and lay out your garment and pin it out to those measurements. So what I like to do is wet the entire piece in some lukewarm water. You can add a little bit of wool wash or a tiny bit of dish soap, whatever you have, and then just let it soak for 25 to 30 minutes. Once you've allowed it to soak, you're gonna take it out, squeeze out as much water as you can. I like to roll mine up in a towel just to get out any excess water and then lay it out on your large blocking mats and get it pinned. Now, I don't want my cuffs to be stretched out, so just I'll make sure that I keep the cuff nice and cinched, but everything else will go out to measurements, including your back panels and front panels. You wanna stretch these bands out. I just don't wanna stretch out my cuff band. So I'm gonna go ahead and block my piece and then I'll meet you back up for seaming and attaching the pockets. 
Okay, so I just wanted to show you my card again being blocked. So I've blocked it all out to measurements. My I started with the back. Um, I like to take the back width measurement as well as the length and get that all measured out. And then I go to the sleeves and then I work through the front panels. Now mine is taking a little bit longer to dry. This has already been about 24 hours. It's still a bit damp, so I'm gonna give it a little bit longer to dry before I remove all the pins for seaming. Okay, so once you have blocked your cardigan, we're gonna pull it off the blocking mats and then we're gonna seam it together. So we're gonna wanna line up our sleeve, which is where I'm gonna start. I left a long tail on the cuff. So this is where we'll start seaming it together. Now, what I like to make sure is that the sleeve is completely even. So what you might wanna do is get a stitch marker and just clip that so that it doesn't move as we're sewing it. You wanna make sure that you're sewing it nice and even. Okay, so we're gonna start down here at the cuff going through each stitch. Okay, and then you're just going to start seaming up the side. So I'm going to work this all the way to the underarm. Okay, once we get to the side, just make sure that you line up your striping color. So B with B, A with A, or your orange and your cream. So just make sure you line those colors up as you go. And we're just gonna continue to whip stitch. Now you can, if you would prefer the mattress stitch or another seaming technique, you just go ahead and use what you're comfortable with. So I'll just continue seaming mine together off camera, going right down to the band, and then I'll repeat this for the other side as well. Okay, so I have the sweater all seamed together. Now I've seamed on the pockets. So what I've done is just lined it up on the front panel. So I just evenly placed it, and then I just sewed it to the Cardigan. So I'm just working on this one over here. And you can just use the pattern sort of as your guide when you're sewing it on. And all I'm doing is going through part of the cardigan and sewing on the pocket.
Okay, and once you're sure that you've sewn it on nice and even, I don't suggest weaving any tails until you're sure you've got it. In a good placement, both sides are placed so they look about the same. And then you can weave in your tails. Now for your belt, you'll just want to crochet up. I basically crocheted up an entire ball to do the belt. If you want the belt even longer, if you're working on some of the plus sizes, you may want to make your belt a bit longer. You can just add some additional yarn and keep going. So now you could attach some belt loops if you want to the sides, but that's just optional. You may not even want to always use the belt, so you don't have to. But if sometimes it is nice to have the belt loop so that you can leave the belt on, but you don't have to necessarily have it tied. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tap the bell to stay updated on all my new videos and tutorials. Thanks so much, guys. Have an awesome day. Thank you.